never thought I'd see the day. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button as we cover a deck, <laughs> a deck to beat all decks that came in seventh place at an Iowa regional, and that is, ladies and gentlemen, you freaking bell. Such a cool card, such a cool archetype. Um, and I, I'm speechless. Yo, boy, speechless. There's not a lot of times in my life where I am speechless, but here, I got to give it to the player who got seventh place with this. We're going to be going into how he uh, came about doing this because um, it's it's actually kind of surprising. And it's actually interesting just in general to see that this came in seventh place. And also considering, too, I've seen a lot of, like, interesting rogue decks doing well at a regional. Or actually, just regionals in general, not a regional, just a bunch of regionals. Like, I saw where uh, Robbie Cole had covered a stun deck with, like, Fossil Dinas and Jowgins and stuff. Um, got, like, top 8 at a regional. Now, granted, I don't know if this was, like, a 20-man regional or what have you. Um, but... It goes to show that even whenever you have a deck like Fire King running around that is definitely over $1,000 at this point, it's interesting to see what decks can still do well uh, with whatever kind of tech cards you're choosing to play. Now, granted, rogue-ish decks do need to win their die rolls, and they do have to rely on the fact that the opponent just doesn't have any side deck options for them, or they just don't see their side deck cards. That is a factor, but... You also have to keep in mind that there's a factor of sometimes the opponent just doesn't know what your cards do, and this is pretty much what happened for this Iowa player from what I watched of the deck profile. So let's not waste any more time. Let's dive on into this. I did make a couple of changes based upon what he said in the deck profile, so be sure to go check out, I believe it was Wise Guys TCG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wise Guys TCG. They've got the deck profile up on there, and we're also going to be talking about the incomplete side deck. Don't worry about that. So... He wasn't playing Ultimate Nightmare. He did say that he wished he would have had it. Um, so we are playing the one Ultimate Nightmare. He was only on two copies of Nibiru. I'm never a fan of playing like one of or, you know, two of copies of Hand Traps. I feel it's like either three or bust. But he got seventh place with Ubel. So I guess I should shut my mouth. Uh, one Terror Incarnate, one Ubel. It's pretty obvious. Uh, three Spirit of Ubel. And then we are playing the Unchained Package with the one Unchained Soul. The Shavara, the blue dog thing, uh, three Shifter, three Ash, because uh, Shifter is actually kind of insane in this deck. These uh, Ubel monsters don't have to go to the graveyard. Uh, some of them just say when they're destroyed. Um, yeah, so like Spirit of Ubel says if this card's destroyed, then you can special summon uh, a Ubel. So do keep that in mind, it doesn't have to go to grave. He wasn't main decking Bell, he was side decking it, but he did say he wished he would have main decked it. Um, he was on three tour guide with uh, Phoenix Rhino Warrior, and that's a lot of normal summons in a deck like this. Um, so even one of the people that commented on the video had said take out the tour guide package and throw in like either more Dark Beckoning Beasts and Spirit Gates, or even just more hand traps. I opted for more hand traps um, because, I mean, you're playing 3, 6, 9, 12 in here. Like, you're fine. Your non-engine is great for this. Um, and Ghost Bell going into the Fire King matchup is actually kind of good. Uh, and then we're on two of the Dark Beckoning Beasts, and then three of, it might as well be called, Lone Fire Blossom number two. Uh, some Sarah D. Lotus. This is what makes sure your whole U Bell engine go around. It's really good. And then for the spells, we're playing uh, one, one for one. Uh, he was on Pot of Prosperity. Do keep that in mind. Uh, a lot of people were saying that he should have ran a Piri Rice map instead. And honestly, I agree. Because since we're playing Super Poly, you don't really want to be using Prosperity to be hitting those cards or to be hitting your Unchained cards. Like, you do have options available to you. Like, he wasn't playing Little Knight. He was playing Nightmare Phoenix. But I feel like Little Knight is just strictly a better card, especially since we're playing Soul of Rage, which is essentially an IP Masquerina. So Piri Rice Map in my testing seems to work a lot better than Pot of Prosperity, but Pot of Prosperity is an option to you. Uh, we're playing the three Super Poly because it's good. Uh, three Nightmare Pain. He said that every single uh, match, at some point in one of the games he played, his opponent didn't realize that Nightmare Pain makes them attack. So they would go into their battle phase, and he's like, okay, now you have to battle with you, Bell. And that's what I mean by where this deck is able to do so well, because if people don't understand how your deck works, or they forget how a card works, or they don't know what your deck does, whatever the case may be, you can get free wins. You know, I said this in my Centurion profile when I came in 10th place and I was playing 15 freaking hand traps. Because for one thing, I was playing Moonlit Chill. No one was playing Moonlit Chill. And people thought the Centurion deck was bad, so they didn't.
didn't prepare for it. Next thing they know, they're crapping all over the floor because I'm dropping a King Calamity on them. Like, it's just crazy. They're, they're not prepared for what my deck can do. Uh, finishing off the spells, we're playing the two Spirit Gates Unleashed. Then we're playing the three Imperm with two Eternal Favorite and then one of the uh, Escaped with the Unchained. He said that he uh, sucked up like five or six monsters with one Eternal Favorite. This card's actually pretty busted, I'm not going to lie. Um, for the extra deck, I love that they changed this name. You Bell the Loving Defender Forever. Such a cool name. Uh, one Starving Venom, one Dragos Capellia, one Garunix, one Mud Dragon, uh, one Gustav Max. He said that this never came up, so feel free to swap this out for something else. Uh, one Unchained Abomination, one Unicorn, one Soul Lord of Yama, one Dark Charmer, one Soul of Rage. And then keep in mind, remember that the Little Knight is um, Nightmare Phoenix. I opted for Little Knight because, honestly, Little Knight's just fucking better. You can go into Solar Rage and then make a Little Knight. I don't know why you would ever be playing Phoenix, unless like, you just can't afford it because I know the card's like $150. Uh, and then we're playing one McCracker. I don't care. I don't, do not care what anyone says. It's a McCracker. <laughs> um, then we're playing, he said that these were the only cards he ever sided in. Three Evenly, Double Lightning Storm, and Lancia, because Evenly Match kind of hurts this deck. He was not playing Solemn Judgment. He said that he wished he would have been playing Solemn Judgment. He said that he really didn't have time to make a side deck for this event. Remember that I said earlier he was playing Bells on his side and he wished he would have had Judgments. So keep in mind that you do have several options available to you, whether it's you want to play Fenrir's on the side or you want to play Pankratops. Uh, one of the people that commented on the video even mentioned Geist Grinder Golem because if you're going second, you can just give the opponent Geist Grinder Golem and then that can give you some pluses. So you do have options available to you in that regard. I've been seeing a lot of people recently talking about playing Anti-Spell Fragrance. Um, Anti-Spell, honestly, in this deck isn't terrible, especially if like you're going first and like if you already have your board established, it's pretty good, especially whenever you combine that with hand traps and stuff, um, or even just bringing in like different hand traps, different non-engines to help with going second, you know, bringing in more going second cards so you can just OTK with you, Bell. Those are options available to you, but... I got to give it to this player. You know, whether that Iowa regional had a thousand players or a hundred players, Ubell has a regional top and that's very impressive. Seventh place is nothing to scoff at. You know, obviously some people will say that the size of regionals may matter a little bit more compared to smaller ones or bigger ones, but still you got to give credit where credit is due. You know, are you going to be able to take this deck to like, you know, the YCS in North Carolina in April and do well? No, you're not. You're going to have to play like Fire Kings, Rescue Ace or Labyrinth, but the fact that the concept is here, there is still something that you can, you know, at least take to your locals and have a good time with, is something that should be respectable. You know, you, again, he wasn't playing Little Knight. You could even just be playing Nightmare Phoenix instead. Or, I don't know, maybe do some shenanigans with, like, Soul of Rage into Mask Rain and then Mask Rain into something else. Like, you, you have these options available to you. But, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Again, I'm trying to get back to uploading. My health has just been all over the place, um, but I at least wanted to get this video out to you guys. Guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.